from the UK, uh, but he's been living with us in the Philippines for nine years. So a tip to our uh, foreign newer speakers here, like Dean actually can tolerate more Dean than the average Filipino now. Like we're in, if we're in Tagaytay, he'd be like super cold and all the Filipinos would be chill. Tagaytay are highlands, by the way. So uh, he's acclimated very well to the Philippine weather, despite being from the UK. Um, aside from that, um, he's also one of the preeminent SEO minds in the international SEO scene. Uh, he's been featured in uh, SENS, SMX, and then uh, in Whiteboard Friday as well. And he's now working as the Director of Operations for AIMA here in Asia. So here to talk about penalties and how to deal with them is Mr. Dean Chu. Thank you, Glenn. Charming as always. Uh, yeah, so Google in the past has penalised some of the largest and most natural websites on the internet. The BBC, BMW, The Washington Post, and on five or six occasions they've even penalised themselves. Also, my little puppy there, they've penalised him, they've put him in Google Jail. No one is untouchable. So, we're going to have a little look about Google penalties and see what we can do. But first, they say, when you're public speaking, you need to break the ice. We're going to smash straight through the ice. You're going to think of me like a brother after this. So, my name's Dean Chu. Friends always call me Chewy, on account of the Chew. There's me, Chewy, with Chewy. One is hairy and ugly, the other one is a Wookiee. Uh, so yeah. I built my first website, Chewy.co.uk, when I was at school. Obviously didn't have a great deal of time to work on a website, considering I was batting girls away, such a handsome young man. I moved into PHP and System Admin around 2001 and I built my first commercial website in around 2003. I know what some of you are thinking in the audience. I'm going to hire that man as a web developer. Look at those web design skills. Well, sorry, I've moved on now. <laughs> I joined IEMA as an SEO consultant in March 2008. It was a startup, seven people. It's now a global SEO company with over 250 employees worldwide. I moved to Asia in 2009, as, uh, as indicated by Glenn. I have spoken at SMX, SES, I've been on Moz Whiteboard Friday many, many years ago, uh, and done a bunch of local conferences and workshops. That's my first speaking gig. I think somebody put something in breakfast muffins, because I'm looking a little bit uh, cheeky there. My hobbies include video games, competitive pistol shooting, golf, watching football, football, not soccer, I'm British, football, <laughs> uh, video games and messing around with my own theatre. That picture's quite apt because I play golf and usually it's what the hell was that? And finally, I love balut. That's a complete lie. Can't stand it. <laughs> I actually, I actually slept, showed this slide in London last month. Girl ran out the back to puke. <laughs> but then it could have been me on stage, so I don't know. Okay, so enough about me and my silliness. Uh, let's talk about some penalties. Uh, there's uh, basically four types of major uh, penalties. Hack site. Snippet spam or structured data issues, thin content, and the big one which is paid or spammy link dev. There are nuances, there are effectively subcategories of these types of penalties, but these are generally the, the main four that you'll encounter. So, to use a very cliche stock photo, we'll do hacked websites. So basically, uh, a hacked website is obviously that somebody's gained unauthorized access to your site. This generally involves injecting uh, spammy links or changing the content or injecting redirects into your website. It's very common 
with old WordPress installs or old sort of plugins that you've got running on your website. And generally what will happen is uh, you'll, you'll have all these hacked pages and Google will basically send you a message in, in Search Console and they'll be like, hey look, uh, these pages have been hacked, um, th these pages are an issue, you need to sort them out. Um, basically, um, while your site is hacked, uh, in the search you'll, there'll be a little message saying, hey, this site might be hacked. In some instance, instances, Google will show an older version of your site. And obviously it's important to get these fixed because in Chrome and Firefox and such, uh, you actually get a full-on warning saying, hey, uh, this website's dangerous to your computer. So your click-through rate is going to go down. So snippet spam, structured data. Come on, that was good. Come on. Yeah. No trackies in the house? Oh my. But that's it, I'm leaving. Uh, so, uh, yeah, so uh, snippet spam. <coughs> so basically, obviously, uh, everybody is aware of the sort of uh, ratings and rich snippets that we now have in, in Google. And effectively, you can manipulate these, you can offer up fake ratings, you can offer up uh, fake profile pictures, fake authors and such. And when you get caught, um, then Google will basically send you a message in Search Console and they'll be like, hey, you've been naughty, you've done this, so you need to clean that up. And uh, generally it's pretty easy, uh, you know, your web developer or, or whoever has done this uh, naughty, uh, unhonest kind of, uh, of uh, rating can go in and they can clean that up. And also, there may be cases where you know they, there's just been a little bit of a mistake. There's maybe been some malformed code, or you're pulling in a rating from the wrong sort of uh, area, and basically, you know, you're, you're displaying ratings, or you're doing something that you didn't actually think was particularly wrong, but Google will pull you up for it anyway. Um, so you need to, if you're doing kind of rig snippets or whatever, you need to make sure that everything that you're doing is, is super clean. Uh, thin content, so that's uh, <laughs> uh, so thin content is usually kind of affiliate pages that you've just list, li lifted straight from the merchant, or it can be cookie cutter sites, doorway pages, and such. Uh, not massively common to see a, a warning about this, a manual action warning, because. Google will just exclude it from the index or what have you. Uh, on the right is another one of my brilliantly designed websites from back in the day. And that was an affiliate website, a fashion affiliate website, which was just basically pulling content straight from the merchant. Wasn't changing anything, there was no content on there. Uh, there was not even any descriptions on the actual products. And it was earning like 100,000 pesos a month. So Google, Stop that, and that's why we hate Google now. Yeah. Uh, paid or spammy link dev, uh, the most popular, the most common, uh, the most subjective, and basically, uh, yeah, Google really doesn't like you doing paid or spammy link dev. And if you are engaged in this horrendous practice, then uh, basically you're gonna get a manual action, and Google is going to send you a message on, on Search Console and they're going to be like, hey, again, you've been very, very naughty and this is against the law because we are the internet police and uh, yeah, you need, you need to sort that out. And it's probably worth taking a little step back as to how people end up in this position. Like, are they doing uh, you know, this battling death or whatever? And when companies or individuals start link dev, they generally weigh up like, oh, you know, I have this much budget and I want this much return. And it's kind of a thought process of, of do I do this like nice and natural and it's going to take a long time? Or do I go aggressive and, you know, I want to get some results? And it's kind of not surprising that for the most part, 
especially individuals, especially smaller companies, they go down the like aggressive, I want commercial anchor texts, I want high metric links, and you know that can lead to problems. On the flip side, generally sort of larger blue chip style companies, uh, their legal teams don't want you to do anything on LinkedIn which could even be perceived as, as paid or spammy or, or even you know, uh, anything other than a purely, purely natural link. So it's kind of interesting to see those two um, thought processes depending on, on the company and where they're at. So we've gone down the aggressive route um, and this is actually a website that somebody posted in the SEO Philippines Facebook page back in November. And it was kind of interesting, it's a, it's a website called 8 Ball uh, Paul Pool Hack, uh, rolls off the tongue now. It's uh, eightballcheat.top, quality domain name. And uh, this website was kind of a, a one-page a one page website. It was ranking in uh, second position for eight ball pool hack, a key term, which generates around 19,000 searches a month. So not crazy, but you know, a decent bit of traffic. And basically, these guys were ranking off of some awesome keywords and anchor text of casino, some uh, Chinese characters, that anchor text that you always want to see in your backlink profile, porn, uh, and some other uh, brilliant, <coughs> brilliant links. Uh, they had no links coming in at all into the web, into the website until like they just exploded with all of these links, and a ton of them uh, no followed. So. Whilst they did uh, get axed eventually, they were probably in the SERPs but for about two or three months. So Google likes to be like, oh, you know, don't do LinkedIn, don't do spam on LinkedIn, because we know, and we, we, can, we can sort that right out. But, you know, there are a lot of cases where they don't catch it, and it, it can work, and it does work. Um, but, on the flip side, like eventually they do catch up with people, and a lot of the time, you know, people do get axed. So with that being said, and with, you know, these larger websites and, and blue chip kind of companies being very cautious about LinkedIn and with backlink profiles being spammy in the past, it's also very easy to just stumble into to a, a penalty by accident. So now, like link cleanup and disavowing links um, has become kind of the norm, cleaning up backlink profiles from, you know, b before. And uh, this data is a little bit old, but the, 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 the message still rings true. And this was a website called Intercasino, which at the, at the time was one of the largest casino websites on the entire internet. And basically, it was hit by a bit of a one-two punch with Panda and Penguin back in 2012. And basically, they had so, so many, so, so many bad links, which was common in the, in the gaming uh, vertical. They basically lost their market share entirely, and we're talking millions and millions of dollars of lost revenue per week uh, on a site of this size. And we got, uh, they came to us, and they basically, uh, we, we started a manual action cleanup. Now, back then, it was a little bit more difficult, but now it's, it's somewhat easier because you've got um, a lot of tools that will help you with this. So, uh, there's Link Detox and uh, Kerbu, which are probably the two most specialised link cleanup tools, and they're you know they're probably your go-to tools. And then you've got the likes of Ahrefs and Semrush, who are kind of wider link landscape link uh, uh, checking tools, but they do offer tools to help with link cleanup. So what you basically want to do is you want to you know, gather a, a sort of list of all of the links pointing into your website. If you have a manual action penalty, uh, Google will also have indicated what links it doesn't like in, in, this, uh, in this manual action. And basically you want to create a link uh, matrix. You want to go through all of your links and you want to see, oh hey, this is a site-wide, or hey, this is from a low, 
uh, domain authority or trust flow website. And uh, basically you want to, you know, you kind of want to work through them. And in an ideal world, you want to contact the webmasters and you want to be like, hey, uh, you know, remove this link. But um, again, life is a lot easier now and you can just basically upload a file, a disavow file, uh, using Google Search Console and for the most part those links will then be disavowed. Again, back in the day, a reconsideration request was a, a very, very stressful thing, and Google's response tended to be <laughs> something like that. Uh, thankfully, that's not so much the case now. Uh, it doesn't take so long. But again, uh, the road to recovery in this case uh, was about nine months. The, the manual action penalty was detected in April, it was July after we cleaned up all of the links and submitted three reconsideration requests. And then in December the manual action was lifted. So it was like nine months to get everything cleaned up and the website back in the, the index and, and generating uh, revenue again. So also, you know, like I said, Google likes to be like, you know, don't worry, we've got this covered. Like, we will just auto disavow links now. We know what everybody's doing. But it's not the case. And around Christmas, so like two months ago, um, it looks like Google kind of got on their high horse again. And uh, a bunch of people were, were reporting manual uh, actions in, in, their, in their Google search consoles. So, nice little Christmas present from Google there. And if, uh, <laughs> if any of you have heard me speak the last couple of times, then you may have heard me talk about uh, negative SEO or launching a negative SEO attack. And actually, my man Jericho, who spoke earlier this morning, was, was uh, very, very uh, kind to be an example in that. Um, but actually, on our, on our own website, we seem to have um, a little bit of a, an issue. Now, funny timing, I had this coming up. I needed some, you know, examples for my speech on penalty removal. HR called me in the office. Dean, do you know anything about these uh, spammy links into our website? Don't know a thing about that. What are you talking about? Um, but anyway, we basically our own website seems to have an issue now. The 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 jury is still out in, on exactly what happened, but I'm going to take you through the process of what we found and what worked. Now, obviously, your mileage will vary because Google treats every website differently. But basically, we saw uh, as per the the other website that I used as an example a minute ago. We saw a massive backlink spike in referring domains into the website, which was odd. We suddenly had um, a bunch of spammy anchor texts coming into the site. Anchor texts that, like, there is absolutely no way that naturally we're, you know, we're, we're using these. And all of these anchor texts were very similar. They were on very, very poor low quality linking domains, uh, I can't really see the domains properly there, but it was stuff like, like just really, really bad spammy domains with uh, really poor trust flow metrics and poor citation flow metrics. And the whole thing was just really, really messy. And basically we went through all of those links and as I discussed earlier, we created a disavow file which basically was like, hey Google, these are all bad links that we, you know, we, we want you to disavow. And basically we uploaded that. And then we, the pages that are most valuable pages, uh, blog posts and sort of case study pages, that, which were ranking well, um, we did basically a, re a single re-indexation request. And unlike the example that I showed earlier, which took like nine months or whatever, this was all sorted in like 48 hours. So Google is much, much better at you know, helping you out in, in these sort of sticky situations. So again, with all of that being said, with this being by far the most common type of penalty and the most discussed, what do we do you know, to avoid these link penalties? What do we do to get the types of links that Jason was just talking about when he was up here a moment ago. 
Well, we wanted to have a look um, and kind of see what sort of metrics make up the internet. Now, admittedly, this is a very small sample size of only 72,000 websites, but it, it kind of does the job. Now, when we, when we looked into these websites, we kind of looked at where the majority of these 72,000 websites sat in terms of metrics. It's kind of interesting how the different tools uh, allocate their, their metrics. So here we have Moz's Domain Authority, uh, and it, it's against our report, last recording, and extrapolate, uh, and guess, best guess of Google PageRank. So we can see with uh, Moz that the majority of this set, set of 72,000 websites are between uh, basically DA10 and DA40, with the large majority being between DA11 and 20. So that is basically saying a large portion of these 72,000 websites landed in that DA20 sort of zone. With uh, AHF's, AHF's domain rating, we saw that kind of um, a lot higher up their scale. So for those guys, it was more like DR41 to, to 50. With Majestic, much more in line with uh, Moz's sort of uh, um, rating of these, of these sets of, of websites, and you're kind of looking at um, the citation flow of 11 to 20. So those red boxes are where the majority of the websites that we looked at and scored sit. And also, um, with, along with citation flow, we looked at Majestic's trust flow, um, which actually saw the majority of sites around the trust flow 10. Now, when you kind of graph this onto a website, servers and what have you, not so relevant, not particularly natural looking. You want to vary your link types. Like, yes, everybody wants to go out there and get a follow contextual link from a DA50, but you need to have these varied link types. You need to have uh, links from images. You need to have links that are no followed. Uh, you need to have links from different types of referring domains, from subdomains. You need to have, uh, you know, you need to have this, this wide variety of, of links across the board, nice and natural. Anchor text is one that a lot of people fall down on. Um, basically, people go for these very commercial anchor text. So, you know, they're looking at uh, the, if you've got a gambling website, they're looking at things like free bets, online gaming, online gambling, that sort of thing. Well. Webmasters, when they write natural content, they don't link using commercial anchor text. They never ever link with those sorts of phrases. They link with the brand name or the website address or, or things like that. So you basically want your anchor text distribution to be brand terms. At least the top sort of five want to be brand terms, the website address, that kind of thing. That looks very sort of natural. Uh, an example here is um, Paddy Power, a UK uh, gaming website. Anchor text is supernatural. Paddy Power, Paddy, betting, like all of that kind of stuff. Uh, the bottom one, not so natural, like free, deposit, money, spins, casino. No webmaster is linking to a gambling website and using terms like that. It is so, so easy to see. Um, but if you are doing like gaming link dev, um, you know you want your links to look natural on the page uh, where possible. You want to create content that's a little bit out of the box. So you know if you're talking about gaming, you can talk about the psychological aspects, like cognitive sort of uh, thinking of gaming. And you know when you put your links into content, that content might be about virtual reality. It might be on a website about game design, um, you know, and then these links are very relevant, they're very natural, and they're going to use anchor texts that, you know, are, are also very natural as well. Um, another, another issue that a lot of people have is that they'll go out and they'll get all of these links in one month and they'll blow their budget and they'll be like, okay, wait, 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 gotta wait, gotta wait, and then they start link building again, and the link graph kind of goes like this. 
But that's not how, again, how really natural links are, are built. Yes, you'll have timely content, content that explodes and you get a bunch of backlinks, but overall your kind of your link landscape should grow over time. And you know, those graphs uh, also reflect in your traffic, your you know, basically the traffic that your website gets from these links that you build uh, will also grow. Uh, another issue that you see very, very, uh, very, very often is websites getting links from websites that aren't even of the same language, have uh, no location relevancy, or are on completely different uh, country code top level domains. Now, yes, you are going to get links from all around the world, and you are going to get links in different languages and such. But if I've got a Philippines fashion store, and all my links are coming from like North America, that like, it's not that natural looking. You know, Philippine bloggers would be more likely to blog about a Philippine fashion store, not necessarily you know these North American websites. So you need to keep it varied. Obviously, variety is the spice of life. But uh, you know, just make sure you don't. Uh, you know, make sure that you, you you get links from links that would appear natural. <coughs> and with all that said and done, uh, I mean, basically, rising tides lift all ships. You know, if you if you do get these nice natural looking links, if you do get them into deep pages and not just index pages and not just money pages, um, then if your internal linking structure is sound and what have you, then you know you should see. A benefit across your website. It's going to take a little bit of time, um, but you will see that benefit. And an example here is a company called Full Beauty. Uh, basically, they got hit with a manual penalty and had a bunch of like de, de indexation issues. And we went through, we cleaned that stuff up, and uh, you know, we started building more natural looking links to put some authority back into the site and you know, and pillow the website and get, to get this link landscape looking uh, nice and natural. And then the, the site was re-indexed, traffic came back and actually came back a little bit higher. So plus 800 daily clicks. Uh, FXCM, um, a lot of my talk has been like, you know, this takes time. Well, you can do this with timely content. Last year, uh, uh, FXCM, was, we were talking about Brexit, which was uh, the UK leaving the EU. Terrible, terrible decision, but let's not get into politics here. <laughs> um, and basically, yeah, we saw, we saw the same, so we, 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 we stuck with the whole methodology of these natural, you know, quality links. And you know we got uh, you know we got we got we saw an uplift in traffic, 80% year-on-year traffic, 180% uh, increase into a specific part of the website. So we've <laughs> we've talked about natural links, so a little bit on uh, unnatural links. Uh, guys, guys, calm down. <laughs> so if you are just constantly going and your client is basically constantly saying, I want high trust flow, I want high citation flow, I want high DA, and you're just constantly building these high metric links, then you're probably going to get caught out at some point. If you just target URLs into a very small section of your website, if you just target uh, you want these links into like just index pages or category pages or what have you, then it doesn't look very natural. Uh, as I mentioned, the sort of the anchor texts that you use, they need to be varied, they need to be more brand specific. Yes, you still need these high metric links, yes, you still need commercial anchors to give you that boost, but overall you want these natural looking anchor texts. Uh, you want to keep the selection of topics of the websites that you're using relevant, but also broad. There's many, many different ways that you can connect website A with your client's website. It doesn't all have to be super narrow. Uh, you know, creative content writing goes a long way. Um, you want, to, I mean, you can't help this, but in an ideal world, you want a client website that is referenced naturally by other other websites. It's already got some sort of uh, backlink profile. 
And the, the most difficult one, especially working with gaming, and, uh, is that a lot of gaming websites, they don't actually have decent content on the site to link to. No webmaster is linking through to the Whip Free Spins page on uh, Best Ball Bingo Bonus Bonanza. It's, it's probably the main name, to be fair. Uh, so yeah, you know, you need you need your clients to have this sort of like linkable assets on their website. You also need to be careful of PBNs, personal blog networks, uh, done wrong, and you need to be care be careful of like basically link merchants, like websites like uh, uh, like Fat Joe or, or what have you, because they will give you you can buy clean links for like a hundred dollars. And for the most part, those links will, will be fine, and the content will be written okay, and the anchor text will be pretty natural. But what can happen is then more and more links come along, and to keep their, you know, to keep their costs down, they have to sell more links on a, on a single website. So your very clean link to your financial website, then two weeks later, it suddenly has links to four different casino websites on that domain also. So yeah, great, you got your $100 link, yeah, great, you got a little boost. Now you've just been associated with you know, a bunch of spammy casino websites. Like, incredibly easy for Google to, to see this. People say, oh yeah, you know, no footprint because there isn't a piece of code that says AHREF blah 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 title equals paid link. Uh, these are the sorts of footprint, footprints that are easy to, to discover. We're nearly finished now, so, uh, you know, whilst you're, whilst you're generating these sorts of higher metrics, these sorts of money, money links, think about long-term, like, seedling links. Web, links on websites that are, that are smaller, where website, uh, webmasters are passionate about their sites, they may not have the highest metrics, um, but generally, they're going to be clean, and generally, throughout the years, uh, you know, the webmaster is going to keep contributing to them. More websites are going to start linking into them, uh, which in turn, you know, uh, you know, raises the profile for everybody. Uh, just quickly looking to the future, like t nothing's going to change. Google, yes, they tweak their algorithm. Yes, people blog about you know loads of things. But in my opinion, from a core perspective, um, it's been it's been so many years. In the days of Matt Cutts, where you know he would stand up and people would get scared. Oh my God, we can't do paid link that We can't do this because it's so bad in Google knows. Like you can still get away with it, but you know you have to be careful, and your website does need to look look natural. So, in my opinion, I don't think too much is, is going to change in, in that perspective. Obviously, SEO as a whole changes every day, but this sort of the way that Google treats backlinks and, and, and the penalties it supplies, it applies probably not uh, too dissimilar to what we've seen. So, with the Winter Olympics on, this guy, right, Australian guy, won three times by being the worst racer, <laughs> and everybody else fell down, and he came first. No joke, the guy did it three times. So be that guy, right? Let your competitors like wipe themselves out. Let Google, you know, catch them. You just keep doing, you know, your natural link there. I know it's easy to say. I know, you know, I know that you still need to get, you know, these these money links. I know that you need to generate revenue, but you know. Just be mindful. So that is me, and uh, yes, yeah, I'm out. So thank you so much. You really killed it today. Um, yeah. Any questions for Dean uh, before we let him off the stage? We have time for maybe one.
What have you noticed about the differences in the way Google's treating their Philippine database versus something like the UK or the United States? Um, you know, there's quite a few of us in the audience that live elsewhere in Southeast Asia, maybe you're from Europe or the US or um, looking at that ourselves. Sure, good question. Um, I'll preface this by saying, to be honest, we, as a company, we don't operate in the Philippines, so we don't necessarily look so much. But obviously, I have an interest here. I have my own sites as well. The problem with the Philippines is kind of the issue that was in Australia and even the UK like 10, 12 years ago, where Google would populate the SERPs with websites that aren't necessarily Filipino websites. So, you know, you, you've got like a, you'd search for women's t-shirts, for in, instance, and you get like Macy's.com in the SERPs, like number two, number three, just based on its like high authority. So, I think that, especially here in the Philippines, where it being such a, 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 a young industry, uh, like local search is, is super important, and, you know, kind of, kind of having that, that content that is a lot more on the sort of longer tail that's really addressing user queries and, and rich snippets and such is super important in, in this, local, uh, this local industry, this local environment. So that, that's the main thing that I see. Still, it's almost like there aren't enough authoritative websites Philippine facing for Google to say, hey, I'll, I'll stick that in three or, or four.